Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining with me tonight in tonight's Monday devotional. Now, I would like to invite each and every one, each and every one of you that is listening to me right now. Let's bow down our heads and let's pray. Lord, thank you very much for this very beautiful and wonderful time that you have given to us, O Lord. Thank you for the Monday, so God, the first day of the week, O Lord Jesus, we're in. Everyone is really busy in their work, trying to catch up deadlines in the office, O God. But Lord, thank you, God, that you have given us time to be able to refresh ourselves, to be able to dig and dive deeper into your word, O God. And somehow, O oh Lord, be, be strengthened by it, O oh Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, even to the airwaves, O oh God, in the social media, that there would be more and more and more people that will be able to listen and to hear tonight's devotional, O oh God. And Lord, I pray that it shall minister to each and every one individually, O oh God, as if it's personal, O oh Lord Jesus. May it heal them. May it comfort them. May it encourage them, O oh Lord Jesus. And I pray, O oh God, that to every family that has been represented tonight, O oh God, who's listening right now in their own respective home, I pray for blessing upon them, O oh God. Lord, I ask for the anointing, O oh Lord Jesus, upon your servant, O oh God. Make me as your mouthpiece, O oh God. Lord, I pray that only your message, O oh God, that shall be delivered, O oh Lord Jesus, tonight. And I pray, O oh God, that whatever things that we are going to share tonight, yours be the glory alone, O oh Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now tonight, tonight's devotional, I entitled it, God, our help, and our shield. Now if you have your Bibles with you, can you open it with me to the book of Psalm? Chapter 115 and verse 11. We're going to be spending time on this one verse alone. And let me read it to you. Okay, here it's a flash it on the screen. Now, Psalm 115, verse 11, and I will be reading from the ESB version. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Again, I would like to read it. Psalm 115 verse 11. And I'll be reading from the ESB version. You who feel the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Now, Psalm 115 verse 11 actually talks about revering God or put the needed reverence or to revere God and place our complete trust in Him. Now, you see, every day in our lives, because of too many problems, too many worries that you and I is really facing practically every day in our lives, and sometimes we often forget that we have a God that we can put our faith and put our trust upon. And somehow we are consumed by the negativity of this world that we tend to forget that our God is a loving God and that our God extends his hand in order to help us. Now, the fear of the Lord is not about being afraid of him. Now, you can see in the Bible, in, in the book of Psalms, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge and wisdom. Now, the fear of the Lord here, this is not something that you and I should be really be afraid of. But instead, this is, this is about having a deep respect, reverence, and awe for His power, holiness, and of course, authority. Again, I'll emphasize this. The fear that we have, the fear of the Lord that you and I have have read in the Bible, this is actually re refers to our deep respect. Our deep respect to our Almighty God, the reverence, or sa Bisaya pa pagtahod, no? the reverence, and of course, the awe for His power, the holiness, and the authority that He has 
in our lives. When we have this reverence, kining atong pagtahod, the natural response is to trust Him fully. Now, when you and I acknowledges how big and how powerful and how magnificent our God is, knowing that He is the one who gives us life, knowing that He was the one who created the world in just a split of an eye, and when He said that there be light, there was really indeed light. And this is the God who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And the moment you and I truly understood how, how big, how great, and how sovereign our God is, you cannot help but trust in Him fully. Now, the verse that we read a while ago reassures us that God is both our help and at the same time, our shield. Help because every day in our lives, there are things that we are really coping up. There are things that are, we are really working it out. And somehow, we just doesn't able to meet it. And that's why we need some help. And every day also, as a believer of Christ and as a follower of Christ, every day, we are actually a target of Satan. And that is why Satan, as what he, as what his mission statement says in John 10.10, 10, the devil or the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's Satan, of course. Satan only has one thing in mind. He's going to do everything, whatever it takes, for, for Satan to destroy you and me. And in that, in that sense, God, understand that we cannot fight the devil on our own. That's why he put his shield. That's why he put his shield on us. Now, perfectly and simply it says, he assists us in time of our deepest need. And of course, protect us from any harm, danger. It may either be physical or spiritual. Now, I would like to stress quite a bit on, on, on the need. You know what? I perfectly understand that somehow we've got, I mean, we do have needs, of course. Bills to pay, electricity, water. We need to provide for our family, food. We need to buy food, tuition fee, payment for the school and everything. And somehow, when, when, we, short, when we lack and short of finances, and somehow we forget that we need to cling on to God, pray, ask for help. And that is supposed to be the primary thing that we're going to do. But instead, we try to do it our own way. We try to exert our own effort. We try to find ways and means all by ourselves. And only to find out that all the things that we have tried to didn't work out. And because it all didn't work out, that's the time that we go to God. How would it be possible if there are cases like that? Why would not go to God first and make things easy? And I believe God in His sovereign will, God will prepare everything. And I believe God already saw all of these things happening long before it actually happened. So in a world that is often unpredictable and full of challenges, I mean, truly, our world right now is really so unpredictable and there are so many challenges every day. So many challenges. Not just in terms of our job, not just in terms of our businesses, but challenges in terms of personal, our relationship, families, and many more. And these are real challenges that you and I are really facing. Now, this verse encourages us to simply you know, trust in the Lord. When we say trusting in the Lord means believing that He is always working for our good. Even when we cannot see Him. And you know what? 
when we say we trust in the Lord, we lean on God both for our strength and our protection as well. We lean. Kung sabi sa'yo pa, musandig ta sa iya ha, both sa ato ang panginahanglan nun, sa atong kusug o sa atong protection. But you know what? This is the real essence of trusting. Trusting in the Lord means believing that He is always working for our good. Not for our destruction. For our good. Even when we cannot see it. And that is exactly the reason why we tend to do things all by ourselves. We tend to do things all by our strength because we think that God is not doing something. We think that God is not doing anything to help us out in our in our troubles, in our problem. We think that God is just simply dead ma. But trusting simply means let that faith grow. And you know what the Bible says? But without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that is exactly the main point. God wants you and I to grow and increase our faith. And increase in that faith, and the more we're going to trust our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, His role, God, Jesus Christ, He is our shield. It signifies His commitment to guarding us against all forms of spiritual dangers and also the attack of enemy, both physical and spiritual. God is committed to protecting you and me. God understands that the moment you step out of the door every day, every day that you are outside, you and I is the target of Satan. And Satan will go in to do everything, whatever it takes, just to bring us down. And because we are children of God, and because we have a relationship with Him, God is protecting us. God is our shield every single day. My friend, the moment you wake up in the morning, I challenge you. Spend a moment of prayer. Open that Bible right at your bedside. Open a passage in there. Read a passage in there. Saturate your mind with the Word of God. Offer and utter a word of prayer. Have a grateful heart. Have a mind that is in tune in with the Lord every single day. And I tell you, it will make a difference in your day. There are days that probably doesn't go the way we want it. Probably there are days that somehow you will say to yourself, Grabihan ng adlawa eh. I know, I understand, because I myself have experienced days like this. Days like that. But it doesn't erase the fact that God is in total control of everything. And probably the reason why we are in that situation, probably we just simply miss something in consulting Him, in asking Him, in praying to Him. These are the things that you and I should always should reflect. Now ask it from yourself. Are we trusting in the Lord for help and protection every day? Every day, ba, when you wake up in the morning, you are asking the Lord for whatever help that you're going to need for all throughout the day and probably ask at the same time that you will be protected against the work of Satan every day. May you cross the street May you ride the bus, ride a tricycle, ride a jeepney, or ride your car, that you will be protected against the danger, both physical and spiritual. That you may be protected with the daily discouragement that Satan is trying to put in your, in your mind. Or probably when life throws difficulties in your way, do you find yourself relying on your own strength? 
na naningkamot ka, ikaw na lang yung kamot o sulban kung unsa man ang imong problema na giyagyan? Or do you find yourself turning to God and trusting God? Because it will make a lot of difference, my friend. When there are problems, when there are situations, when there are crises, it would make a big difference in our lives if we learn to put the trust ahead first and put that trust in our living God, the, own, the author and the finisher of life. And I believe he's going, to make, he's going to arrange things for us. Even if we don't see it, God is working on something. So you just have to ask. You just have to ask that, Lord, if nagkagubot ang akong adlaw, if daghang kong problema nagisagubang, musalig ba ko sa akong kusog na akong paningkamutan o solba ding mga problema? Or I'll kneel down and pray, ask for the wisdom that comes from you. My friend, this is just only a reminder in today's devotional that you and I can trust God. Not just in big things, but also in small things. After all, He is our Abba Father. Again, after all, He is our Abba Father. In Psalm 115, verse 11, this is a reminder that those who respect and revere the Lord can have full confidence in His protection and provision. Again, I'll read it. The, the passage that we just read a while ago, and I read it again. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. This verse will remind us, hopefully it will remind you and me, that those who respect and revere the Lord so much can have that full confidence that every day, the protection that comes from the Lord, the provision that comes from the Lord, you and I will be able to enjoy it. You and I will be able to experience such a blessing. Our God is always there, ready to assist us, and of course, defend us in time that we needed Him the most. Now, let me share to you some 10 points for practical living that I, that I have observed from, from this passage, from Psalm 115, verse 11. Now, very practical things that you and I can really put into practice every day. And somehow, hopefully, that you will remember it. And if in case you forgot it, you can just simply go back to this to this uh, page and somehow review, review this vid video. Okay, 10 points for practical living. Let's start with number one, develop a reverence for God. Reverence, no? Pagtahod na dunay kahadlo. Muna. Reverence, pagtahod na dunay kahadlok. Develop that reverence for God. It will cultivate a much deeper respect. And of course, you will be in awe of God's holiness. You will be in awe in God's power. You will be in awe of His majesty in your life. The fear of the Lord isn't about being afraid. Remember that. But having a profound recognition of His power and holiness. Meaning, when we say the fear of the Lord, it is about revering that power and that holiness that is in Him. You know what will happen if, if that kind of reverence is in us? Every day, you will treat every single day that you are going to wake up in the morning to be a blessing coming from the Lord. You will treat your day that God had given you to be a very special day and that you're going to do the most out of it and that everything that you're going to do all throughout the day will only have one purpose and that is to bring glory to His name. 
that what respect begets. Number two, learn to trust God fully. Not half-heartedly, but fully. Not one half, not one fourth, but trust God fully. When you fear the Lord, trust becomes a natural process. When you have that reverential fear in the Lord, automatically that kind of respect will radiate in your whole being. Thus, automatically, whatever situation you're in, whatever problems you are in, automatically the response of that fear will lead you to trust God more fully. Rely on Him. Rely on God for both your daily needs and your larger life challenges. Knowing that He is a trustworthy God. In Bisaya Kasaligan, when God says, come to me, all of you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. It was an invitation and telling people and observing people that they are so tired of doing things all by themselves. And this time, the invitation is very clear from the Lord. Come to me, all of you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. So means, so it means when we fully depend on God and when that faith develop more trusting into God, not just for the bigger problems, but even to the small ones. Life can be so beautiful. No stress, no need to worry on things, but walking every single day in love and in trust in God. Okay. Number three, know that God is your help. Remember that. God is our help. He always helps us in moments of difficulty. In moments that you and I started to feel weak, He is our help. In fact, God had placed the Holy Spirit in us to be our helper. That will help us in times that we need it the most. When there are temptations that are coming our way, the Holy Spirit can help us. When there are challenges that will come our way, the Holy Spirit is there to help us. In our moment of discouragement, the Holy Spirit is there to help us. We just need to turn to God at all times. We just have to keep on tuning in to Him. He is always ready to help you through trials and to give you the strength that you need. You know what's the only problem? We fail to knock on those doors. We fail to call upon Him for help. We fail to communicate with God at all times. When God says, pray without ceasing, He's just actually demanding us to be in constant communion with Him. Every single day, every single moment in a day, God wants a constant communion with Him. And hopefully, my friend, you and I, will be able to practice as such. Number four, rely on God's protection. God is your shield, right? Protecting you not just from the physical dangers, but also from spiritual attacks. And of course, the challenges that you may not even see. There are certain things that beyond your naked eyes, it could be a danger up ahead, and the Holy Spirit will Put a prompting in your heart. That's protection. Probably you will be subjected into greatest uh, into great humiliation, and God prevented it from happening by redirecting and rewriting your schedule on, the, on on that day. Well, that that is God's protection. Anything that secure you from the danger 
that's God's intervention. That is God's protection. In His sovereign will, He does not. Number five. Oh, this one. This will allow you to be really stressful. Avoid self-reliance. If you depend on yourself too much, you get tired. Remember that. A lot of people actually give up on life, not because life is doesn't have meaning at all, but because they try to do things all by themselves and then eventually they get tired of doing things. When you say avoid self-reliance, it's easy. You know what? It's easy to rely on our, on our own strength. But you know what? God calls us to trust in Him instead. When He says, Come to me, all of you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. It is more than an invitation. It is a command that He's telling you, Come to me. And I want you to remember this, that whatever kind of situation you are in right now, God is our ultimate source of help. Not our own abilities or resources because our own abilities and resources is short of sight. We can only see what is obvious, but God looks beyond what we cannot see. And that is exactly the reason why we call Him our ultimate source of help because long before the problem comes into our life, God already had prepared a solution for that problem. And the only thing that really matters here is to call upon Him in prayer. You know what's the problem with man? We forgot, we forget to pray. Sad, but it's real. Sad, but it's true. Okay? Number six, number six, sorry. Number six. Seek God's guidance in decision. You know what? Every day, there are things that we really do make decisions. Every day, we're going to be in a crossroads that you are going to make a choice between going left and going right or probably go straight. Every day, you're going to be confronted with a decision of choices, either to do that or to do this. Every day. Now, if you rely on your own wisdom, if you rely on your own capacity and analysis, always remember that there are things that we don't see that only God knows from His sovereign plan. There are things that probably we may be able to calculate the situation, but there are unforeseen situations up ahead that somehow that is already beyond our, beyond our naked eyes. But it is clearly seen by God. And that is exactly what I always tell to people. What is important is what is important in here in the decision that we make is that is not actually the kind of decision that we make or the choices that we make. What is important in there is that whatever decision that we have we have we have took in our lives, what is important there is that God is ahead in that decision. That if ever we are going into that destination. Nothing really matters the most as long as God is in there. Whatever kind of choices we make, it doesn't really matter as long as God is in there. Whatever situation you are in, it doesn't really matter as long as God is in there. When we say trusting God, it means we just have to simply consult Him in all areas of our lives. Either it is big or small. And that is what Lordship is all about. When we surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, being our Lord and Savior, we are telling God, God, starting this time on, you will be my guidance counselor. Starting from this moment on, you will be the person in authority over my life. And therefore, God, everything that I make, in, and everything that I that I make, everything that I will decide, and everything that I will do, I will consult it to you because what is important is that in everything that I do, you are in there, oh God. Let God guide our decisions rather than making on our own 
And somehow, we make mistakes. We make a lot of mistakes. We cannot trust our instincts. I mean, we are humans. We are, we are corrupted beings. And therefore, there's no ability in us to be able to see what are the goodness ahead of us. Okay? Number seven, rest in God's faithfulness. Now, remember this. God never fails to keep His promises. Not a single promise in the Bible that it wasn't fulfilled. Everything. What the Lord promises, He will be faithful to do it. And whatever things He has started in you, in us, He will be faithful to complete it. Trust that He's always faithful in those times that you are going to need Him the most. He have written that in the scripture. He have written that so that you can go back to that and you can present it to the Lord just as he promised. You know, when man makes promises, it's just meant to be broken. It takes a lot of effort you exert a lot of effort to really be able to fulfill it. But in the case of God, it is a done deal already. From the time we are born and up to the time that we're going to die, God already saw it, how it would happen. And that everything that will happen to us here are no coincidence at all. It is a preordained destiny, destined situation and God knows exactly how it would end. And that is exactly the reason why when you and I delight ourselves in the Lord, eventually His will will be our will. There would be an alignment of the will. Okay? So rest on that assurance that God is faithful. Number eight, pray for God's protection. Pray. For a believer, two things that is important. You soak yourself in the study of the scripture. You meditate it day and night. You read it, you pray, you pray with you, 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 uh, you spend time in, in, in devotional, but at the same time, you, you spend time in prayer as well. Two things. Read the Bible and pray. Acknowledge God as your shield in your prayers. Ask for His protection daily. Not just, not just for, for yourselves, but also for the people that you love the most. Your loved ones, your parents, your siblings. Your brother, I mean, parents, colleague, co-worker, or anybody that are important and close to you. Pray for their protection as well. Because they might be an object of Satan's um, mission in destroying. And that's why we need to pray for them as well. My friend, always remember this. When you and I surrendered our life to the Lord Jesus Christ, automatically we became target of Satan. Satan will going to do everything, whatever it takes, in order to bring us down. So be careful. Pray at all times, not just for ourselves, but also for the people that we love. Number nine, surrender control. When you submitted to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ, no longer supposedly Nakita ang na control. But instead, it will be of God. Trusting that He will be the one to govern this life that we have right now. So everything that we are, we are going to need, the help and the protection, we just simply have to surrender those things to Him. 
He is in total control. And of course, being God, we believe that He has a much better plan than us. And lastly, encourage others to trust God. Help others who are struggling by reminding them of God's faithfulness. You can share your testimony. Encourage a brother, a sister, a fellow worker. Let your story be heard by other people so that they will they themselves will be encouraged to trust God as well. They just need to hear stories of how God is working in our lives. That is why we, we are called as witness because we will we we will be the living proof that our God is real. And these are the things that our God is doing in our lives. Our God is a powerful God. And when we say we trust Him, we surrender our life. We raise our hand. Surrender. Can you just imagine? When you say surrender, you raise your hand, right? You, you raise your hand. Surrender. It means you are no longer in control. You're giving it to the person to whom you surrender it. And in return, you trust to the person to whom your life you have surrendered. Today, in this Monday devotion, in this short but very sweet devotion, I want you to ponder out, my friend. I want you to spend time asking yourself, Lord, have I fully trust you? Lord, have I maintained communicating to you? Lord, are you my all in all? I would like to invite you in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you very much, O Lord, for today. Thank you for the message that you have brought, uh, brought to us, O God. Thank you for the learnings. And Father, I pray, O Lord, that through those words, O God, our faith will grow more and more, O God, and that we may learn to trust you even more, O God, knowing that you are the God who are in control of everything. Nevertheless, you are the God who are or who can be trusted, that you are the God who is total control of every single thing in this world, including my life, including your life, and everybody's life. Thank you, Lord, that amidst the billions of thousands, billions of people in the whole world, you have given us a chance to wake up this very, this very morning, oh Lord, giving us another day, another chance to be able to praise, honor, and glorify your name, oh God. Today, O oh Lord, or tonight, O oh God, I pray, O oh Lord Jesus, that your hands will always be upon us, O oh God, and that your legions of angels will be covering us for protection, O oh God. Not just for us, O oh Lord, but also for our loved ones, O oh God. Help us with our troubles, O oh God. Help us with our problems, O oh Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that solution will be ahead of us, O oh God, long before we have prayed for it. And Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you will direct every steps that we are going to take and every decisions that we're going to make, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord Jesus, that to everyone that is listening here tonight, O oh God, Lord, I pray that it will bring comfort to each and every one of them, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and I pray, O oh God, even I for myself, O oh Lord, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to continually anoint me, O oh God, and grant me the needed wisdom that I may be share that I may be able to share your word to the people, O oh God, that surrounds me through the social media and through the airwaves, O oh God. Thank you to those people that are joining with me right now. God bless their heart, O oh Lord Jesus. Grant them the desires of their heart, O oh God. To, to those that are listening and joining with me live, O oh Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray that they are going to join every Monday at 8 p.m., O oh God. Lord, I pray and I touch and Lord, I pray and I, 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 
I, I pray, Lord, that you touch their hearts, O oh God, that they are going to join every Monday, O oh Lord Jesus, O oh God. Thank you, thank you so much. All for your glory, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Great, huh? So I'll just put down here and so much at least uh, we will be able to, you know, um, keep in touch even uh, even in a short period. And it's it's just it's just 40 minutes, right? It's just 40 minutes and, and thankful. And I'm very thankful for each and every one of you that that is joining with me right now live. Thank you for the five audience that is joining with me. Thank you for for Miss Anacel, thank you for Loisa, thank you for for Christian, thank you for Mom Imelda. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, five. No, oh, thank you very much for the five of you. I really appreciate it, and I want you to know that uh, I will keep you in my prayer that somehow Monday after Monday we will gonna be joining. By the way, I would like to invite you. This coming Saturday, we have a Saturday circle at 4 p.m. Pastor Earl will be sharing to you the Word of God. And I would like to invite you also Thursday, that is 1.30 p.m. It is an in-depth study of the Word of God. And at the same time, it is also our prayer meeting. Come and join because we will be praying for all of our concern. We will, be, we will, we will, we will pray with you at the same time. So thank you very much. And I hope that we will be able to see each other again this coming Monday. Thank you, and God bless you all. Bye-bye.